this is Snafu. Snafu is a soldier. He's a patriotic, conscientious guy. Uh, thinks the army's swell. Uh, that is, with a few minor changes. You'll find Snafu in all branches of the service, such as the infantry. In the matter of rolling a pack, Snafu has improved somewhat on the regulation army method, resulting in a more compact kit. Snafu's a deep thinker. There's a burlesque theater where the boys like to go to see Queenie the cutie. A burlesque show. The lordy diddy do 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 and always just in time. Take it off, take it off. Cry from the rear, down in front, down in front. Soon it's all in time. But she's always going to be in the mind. And she stops, and always just in time. to join in the fun, a jabbing the jaff and hunting the hun. And look at the job that they hand out to me, KP. 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 And KP. Police in the camp or the trouble that's mine. You get through with this, then they stand you in line. They jam you for this, and they jam you for that. Ah! Oh! If you're asking me, it's a pain in the prat. If I ran this army, boy, I'm telling you, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I do. Say, who in the bloomin' blue blazers are you? Technical fairy. Voice class. I heard you saying that everything stank, that you'd run things different if you had more rank. So as technical fairy, I got a good notion to give you a chance, pal. Here's a promotion. <laughs> Ah, shucks, have another. Your Master Sarge, Super Sarge, who would he do? Your boss of the wakes. Now take over, Snafu. Important announcement. Attention, each tent. This camp is now run under new management. Relaxation. More money. 
These are my aims, a new GI issue. Each guy gets two things. Hooray for Snafu, gives us all limousines. No more drill, no salutes. No more cleaning latrines. Look me over, Jackson. This is really all root. Snafu let you dress up in a suit that is zoot. Ain't this swell? I fix things. I told you I could. What a camp. No more discipline. Boy, am I good. I beg pardon, sir, but you hear all that humming? I got a suspicion. The Germans are coming! The Joymans? The Joymans? I'll wait at them poops. Let me at them Joymans. Say, where are my troops? Troops! Troops! Ah, nurse! No use. They ain't trained and they got no morale. Your army's a washout, my fine footed pal. <laughs> The sooner we're gonna beat Hitler, that joke.
and let my secret out. What was that I heard you say, my little sauerkraut? He wonders who in hell it was that let his secret out. <laughs> why I am here. I'm Goldie the Gold Brick. Be like me. Use your head. With a heart of pure gold and a backside of lead. When there's cold and there's rain and you don't want to train, you Gold Brick, just Gold Brick, just Gold Brick. Just pretend that you're sick and your poor back is sore and limp with a groan to the hospital door. While your pals train in rain, you can lay back and snore. If you gold brick, just gold brick, just gold brick. When you're digging a slit trench that ought to be deep and the going's so tough that you go down near weep, just dig a few inches and crawl in and sleep. And gold brick, just gold brick, just gold brick. When there's work to be done and the load weighs a ton, get a helper and a gold brick. Just gold brick. Just relax and avoid all the duties you hate. This life must agree, he looks better of late. Why, I do believe that I'm putting on weight. Goldbrick, dear Goldbrick, sweet Goldbrick. Hey, fellas, wait for baby. Just pretend that you're sick and your poor back is sore. Remember? Yeah. And a limp with a groan to that hospital door. Gold brick? I'm a gold brick. I'm a gold brick. Japan could win war. Gore brick, honorable gore brick, honorable gore brick.
horse gets the glory and the navy gets the cheers. But all a dog face ever gets is mud behind the ears. Yeah, the tank boys ride in comfort and a sailor takes a sail. But the dog face never gets a chance to sit down on his tail. Four feet in my shoes, I got them infantry blues. I wish I'd join the tank corps. Them guys got it sweet. They sit and do their fighting on a nice, soft seat. Technical Perry, voice class at your service. What's that you say? The tanks? Okay. Tanks, 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 all to the tank car. Thank you very much, pal. Boy, this is really swank. You can have the infantry. I'll ride in a tank. The work just ain't my meat. I wish the hell I joined the fleet. The fleet? A very interesting request. Fleet, 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 fall, 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 to the Navy. Heave ho, me hearties. You hold for the open sea. This is twice as easy as the poor old infantry. Oh, I'll be the war's greatest hero. Oh, 
find the world's best damn fighting machine, oh. Them Nazis will learn what I mean, oh. My wonderful guns will murder them bums, and I'll bury them in the latrino. Stick him up or I'll blow your brains out! Ah, what a rifle! Come on! That rifle looks just a bit gooey. If you think I am scared, you're plum screwy. Go on, fire away, buck your damn guns full of luck, or nothing comes out but just hooey. <laughs> What a gun, I'm defeated. Such a gun just can't be beaten. No water connected, no wonder it got overheated. Now, in the German army, mein lieber Herr, our weapons work fine, cause we give them great care. Oh, you're perfectly safe, I am thinking. It's musty and dusty and mighty damn rusty. Conditions inside are just stinking. Really, they are. <laughs> A behind fence, Snafu is the world's greatest zero. Freeze the nuts off a jeep. We're standing tonight on the old campground. Give us a song to cheer. Our weary hearts, a song of hope. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. soft back there. They don't even know there's a war going on. Back in my hometown. Take my old man. He's probably down at Kelly's. <laughs> oh. 
and more. I know what she's doing every afternoon. All afternoon. <laughs> and Grandpa. Huh. He never did a day's work in his life. some other guy at this identical moment. Ah, oh, my darling. What big eyes you have. Jeez. They're loafing, playing. Well, I freeze up here. I wish I could see them. I'd tell them a thing or two. Technical fairy, voice class. At your service. Okay, Snafu. Maybe you got something there. Brass monkeys, but it's cold. Now let's take a look at the lazy, wazy home, folks. Suppose we look at your old man first. See how your ma is making out. Hi, oh, Silver! Manola! Coming, Mother! This stuff sure makes things. Grow, don't it? And that grandpa of yours. They thought I was too old for this job. <laughs> don't bother me a bit. the wax. We're working like hell in the old hometown. They're working in the old hometown. Working in the old home town. Gosh, I didn't know you cared. Woo woo. <laughs> sunny day with the air fresh and clean. Not a rumor was stirring, except <clears throat> in the latrine. Hiya, Snafu. What's new? Oh, nothing much. Nice day. Nice day for a bombing. Yeah, nice bombing weather. <laughs> bombing weather. Bombing weather. Sounds harmless enough. Innocent stuff. But let's take a look in and find out what's cooking. Bombing weather. Bombing weather. Bombing weather. Bombing weather. Bombing weather. Just between you and me, pal, I hear we're in for a bombing. The hot air is blowing. A rumor is growing. They're gonna bomb us. They're gonna bomb us. They're about to bombing. They're about to bombing. They bombed us. Did you hear about the terrible bombing last night? Well, I heard it on good authority. That was our spirit. Balloon juice. It's phony, 
but uh, it makes nice baloney. That's right. Exaggerate it. Stretch it. Multiply it. Now, shoot off your face. And baloney is flying all over the place. Worst air raid of the war. Yeah. They blasted hell out of Brooklyn Bridge. Coney Allen was wiped out. What's the matter with our planes? They popped them off like kites. Them parachute troops landed right on the White House lawn. The Florida coast is lousy with invasion barges. Just a minute, bud. Did you know that we have nothing to fight with? That our shells are all duds? <laughs> forces move up, they must exercise great care. Every object is a possible booby trap. Some booby traps are more alluring and ingenious than others. If you are a boob, you will be trapped. I wish the hell you'd shut up. I ain't no boob and I won't be trapped. Me. <laughs> Hey, I wonder, could this be one of them there booby traps? Mm -hmm. Could be.
with it. I never could get that last note, anywho. <laughs> Boy! Tobacco! You know, I ain't had a good smoke in years. <laughs> Hiya, toots! What cooks? I don't have to worry about no booby traps. to do some brain work. How the hell do you expect a guy to study with all that racket going on? Study? Nuts. When I get at them Nazis, I ain't gonna clunk them over the head with no books. What you gotta give them dopes is a belly full of lead. <laughs> Hello, Superman. Huh? Well, if I was Superman, I bet you I'd show them plenty. Okay, chum. As technical fairy voice class, I now pronounce you Snafu for man. Oh boy! Enemies of democracy, beware! <laughs> Like a job for Snap Man. Hey, wait! You forgot your navigation maps! Thank you very much. But I am not bombing Berlin with maps this season. <laughs> Aha! 
a lumbering Japanese tank. Come out, you bandy-legged disturber of world peace! <laughs> I deserve this. General! I. Ooh! 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 Messerschmitz! A whole mess of Messerschmitz! Trying to bomb our port, eh? as a point out match. Justice to me nose. Well, well, well. Swimming at sundown and naked all over. Ah, just my meat. It's Snafu. I never forget a face. Hmm. No resistance. Hmm. Now, where did that little son of a gun go? My type. <laughs> Caught me with his pants up. But I'll show the little. for the soft underbelly of Snafu. Thank you. 
Right windage. Four. Range. Seventy-five. Four at four o'clock. What did you do in the big war, Daddy? Oh, I did my share. <clears throat> Just a moment, please. This program has come to you through the courtesy of my sponsors, the United States Army, distributors of GI repellent, mosquito nets, adabrine tablets, and good old-fashioned horse sense. Gee, I wish the hell I'd used them. So, gentlemen, if you want to fool them, remember this. Just make yourself part of the natural surroundings. 
<laughs> See what I mean? Absent, sir. Hey, what's up, Jack? that that man could stand a little further training in the care and use of the gas mask? Remove and replace mask, gas. 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 Replace mask. gas. Replace mask. Replace. Exercise. Hot, hop, beep, hop, hot, hop, beep, hop, hot, hop, beep, hop. on the stomach. I'll surround him. Now you go that way. And uh, you go that way. And you? Oh, that's me. I'll go this way. This is the life, laying out here in the sunshine, with a chirping of the blue boys, the hum of the bees, and the smell of new moon hay, and apple blossoms. And fly paper. <laughs> fly paper? No mask. didn't know you cared.
soldier returns from the global grind. Home is ahead, the front is behind. Our soldier returns, and his hometown is proud. Look at that brass band. Look at that crowd. Our returning hero has, no doubt, a million things to talk about. Safe at home, away from battle, restricted stuff makes harmless prattle. Our outfit's number 999. Now, we hold the center of the line. The British hold the hills just west. A pillbox here, machine gun nest, 200 medium tanks, the best. Now, you've got that off your chest. Why not go out and blab the rest? Our landing field? Boy, is that sweet. It measures 15,000 feet with nine new runways, all concrete. Those new Jap tanks sure pack a punch. They knocked out Battery B. If those nips ever start to push, they'll shove us in the sea. Flashing to you, the news of the day. Our new secret weapon did this to the foe. What hit you, Tojo? Wouldn't you like to know? I know what did it, what made the big hole. Our new flying bazooka with radar control. You see, I know all about it. I was right there. I seen it with my own eyes. The propelling charge is attached to the tail surface, and the booster adapter activates the bomb which sets off the fuse in the trail fast, therefore giving the bore a casual stroke pending on the setting of the carburetion, which is time with the ADHD spark plugs, which in time can for instance. Our very next move, well, this is straight from the boss, is amphibious attacks on a shush of parts, see? Our dawn will move in, the flagels are no galore. And our new prank of stifles, I'll just throw it to the shore. Naturally, it consigns not only, but without a what would we have, indubitably. And by the way, speaking of convoys, do you know that when I sailed with a 999, without a single ship to protect us, why, the things we saw en route and the places we went. Hmm. Now, this is strictly confidential, and you'll treat it so, I hope. But strictly confidential, here's the latest dope. Now, coming in at 74 degrees, we placed our guns in a major artillery round here. And besides that, not really good. You might just as well ride it all over the sky. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the War Department regrets to announce that due to recent leaks and restricted military information, our entire 999th Division has been annihilated by the enemy. The 999th? My own outfit. Some guy shot his mouth off. Any joint that'd do that ought to be run over by a streetcar. <laughs> It was down in the Panhandle Valley when I was King Bull of them all that my eye fell on Sweet Angelina and I sounded my bold mating call. She said, yes. On our honeymoon, she and I sauntered through the glamorous Grand Hotel door. And believe it or not, at that instant, the Nazis and Japs declared war. From here, from there, from everywhere, the beat of drums, the bugles blare, the guns and men were passing through. Look, holy smoke, there goes Snafu. I saw my duty. I waved her goodbye. If Snafu could make it, by gosh, so could I. I made it, and boy, was I processed. Wherever he fought, on whatever far shore, I'd follow Snafu, and I'd feed him, I swore. Damn the torpedoes, I cried to the crew. Full speed ahead, 
with a food for snafu. Snafu must eat. He cannot win unless he has his vitamin. Through ice and snow and sleep they crunch. They must get through with Snafu's lunch. I can't make it. I'm pooped. I'm all through. Food for Snafu! and jungle heat. One only thought, let Snafu eat! <laughs> Snafu must eat, he shall not fast. In spite of bomb and shrapnel blast, the precious food arrives at last. Come and get it! More, more, come on, give me a little more. Head up, boy, you're a good guy. Come on, give me a little more. That's it, come on, load it. That's more like it. <laughs> joined up the first day of war, but now I'm regretting my haste. I joined up as food for Snafu, but all I became was just waste. They'll be shipping us out soon. From the equipment, it looks like the South Pacific. This is confidential. So I'm staking this past the sensor. to the port of embarkation. They gave us shots for tropical diseases, so I know it's the South Pacific. Hey, bud, mail this for me. Thank you. 
one of us had a little bit. In the Fort Valley John Bowl. Is there a postman in the house? Technical ferry, hoist class, at your service. You gotta get this to Sally Lou. But, have you forgotten the sensor? Ah, uh, it's okay. We got a private code. Well, if you insist. But I'll hate myself in the morning. Now I can fight in peace. Guess what? Uh-huh. My snafu in a big surprise move. Uh-huh. Bingo Bango Island. Big surprise. Don't tell us soon. Bingo Bango. A big surprise. Don't tell. Big move. Keep it to yourself, but... Yes, a surprise. So <laughs> flung out posts of our global battlefronts. Fully aware of the importance of their individual responsibilities, the sentinels of our outermost frontiers stand their lonely vigils with quiet courage and cheerful devotion to duty. 249 days in this godforsaken hole. 249 days! <laughs> HQ to NIX. HQ to NIX. Your 249th request for transfer is herewith denied. That is all. Eh, phooey. Everybody gets to get into the scrap but me. Come on, get the lid out, sad sack. I'm in the mood for love Simply because you're near me Honey but when you're near me, <laughs> I'm in the mood for love. Heaven is in. That's insubordination. I could break you for that. Scream. Right as the stars we're under. Observation posts have lost contact with the enemy fleet. That is all. 
NHQ calling all stations. Rush today's complete observation reports. Omit nothing. Urgent. 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 A complete report, huh? Okay. Here in a nutshell is the sensational events of the day. At precisely 05.47 a.m. in the morning, the sun rose. At 06.13, the tide came in. At 06.18, the tide went out. Until 1200 o'clock, the proverbial tropical sunshine. At 12.09, relief in the form of rain. At 14.44, in floats a tin can labeled fish eyes with rice. Pickle fish, fish eyes with rice. rice? That is all. HQ to NIX. HQ to NIX. Confirm report on tin can. Rush detail description. This is important. HQ to NIX. HQ to NIX. What's keeping you? What's holding up that report? Urgent. Urgent. Uh, keep your shirt on. Urgent, urgent, urgent. Hey, feather puss. Maybe you swept it under the rug. <laughs> Okay, get ready for the devastating news. Ah, uh, man, it's just an ordinary tin can. Pickle fish eyes with rice. And, uh, oh, yeah, wrote on the bottom, it says Honorable K Ration, uh, Imperial Japanese Navy. with rice. I don't get it. Wouldn't you think they could find something important for me to do in this here army?
doesn't live here anymore. Another smashing blow against the enemy is underway. To understand the months of grueling work and preparation that go into a raid such as this, we must start at the very beginning. Selective service draws on the nation's manpower. Inductees are rigidly examined for any defects. Only the finest may serve. Basic training begins. Drill. Manual of Arms. Bayonet practice. Obstacle course. Cadets have earned their wings. Full-fledged fighter pilots, ready for action. Very discouraging. The enemy's defense seems impregnable. But wait. Another smashing blow against the enemy is underway.
Lock a feather, Dusters. Oh, brother Booba. What a break you got. And remember, the enemy is tough and vicious. You gotta be twice as tough and vicious. Now get in there and tear them to bits. <laughs> job.
The Aleutians are a string of island bases extending over a thousand miles westward from the Alaskan Peninsula. These islands, the Japs once considered a back door to the United States. But when the door was opened... Oh, forgettable incident! And now our back door is a front door to Tokyo. Bountiful Mother Nature has endowed these islands with all the rich variety of weather from her abundant storehouse. In fact, the old bag blew her top! My gracious! Such conditions are almost unbelievable. Nevertheless, that's the conditions that prevail. Due to these rapidly changing weather conditions, the GI is constantly faced with a problem of what to wear. Here, a soldier sets out on an important mission. The only vegetation on the island is the tall grass covering the marshy tundra. There are no trees. You're telling me. Another factor that complicates life here is the thick, gummy mud peculiar to this region. I don't mind the mud, but George hates it. Claude don't like it neither. Owing to the volcanic origin of the islands, there are frequent earthquakes, which are uh, uh, far-reaching in their effect. Seven! Geronimo! It often gets um, quite breezy up here. However, these willy-was, as they're called, die down as suddenly as they arise. But wind or no wind, nothing can stop this man from the accomplishment of his mission. Uh, the problem of getting over snowy terrain has been solved by converting vehicles into so-called snow goes. One of the greatest hazards to flyers in the Arctic is the sudden formation of ice on the plains. Well, what's this? Oh, it's him again. Airstrips present a serious problem. It's almost impossible to keep their surface entirely free of moisture. in the Aleutians. But that's the way things are up here. Unbelievable conditions. Unbelievable! Oh. Nevertheless, that's the conditions that prevail. Now a fugitive, 
Battered and beaten, she spends her numbered days in a miserable hideout. You all know her name, Anopheles Annie, the malaria mosquito. Oh. To look at me now, you wouldn't hardly believe it. <laughs> but back in the good old days, I was really some stuff. Yeah, it was a cinch for a gal to get along when I was young and good looking. But times have changed. Why, well, I used to be the toast of the hot spots, queen of the swamps. The world was my playground, the South Pacific, India. North Africa, Italy, yep, all over the world. I knocked them on their eels. I took my drink straight, but the boys got theirs mixed with a Mickey Finn. My percentages was going up. When the big shots turned on the heat, it was the same old vice squad that made it hot for me down in Panama. Parasitologists, entomologists, malariologists, every damnologist in the country got on my trail. And I do mean trail. They started a cleanup. First, they wise the boys up. from Burma to Bizet. The racket's getting tougher. The percentages ain't what it used to be, but thanks to Snafu, a smart operator can still sneak in for a one-night stand. Pipe the torso. Look at those knees. He don't care where he goes. He's wide open. Repellent? <laughs> he never touches the stuff. And that goes for the atabreen, too. <laughs> As long as that guy's around, a little gal can still make an honest living.
Hello. Hmm? Is that so? 180 degrees. I don't believe it. Where? Iran. Now, where is that? Just a minute. How glad, nice land. Iran. Hmm. I'll be right over. <laughs> so this is Iran, eh? Uh, let's see what the little old guidebook has to say. Iran. Furnace of the Middle East. Chamber of Commerce stuff. Where the sun bakes all day and the earth cooks all night. Where the temperature sometimes reaches 180 degrees. Well, uh, propaganda. Here, the native beast of Burton, the camel, is the only one who doesn't mind the heat. I don't care what you say. I'm hot. <laughs> so intense are the sun's scorching rays in this torrid region, so utterly devastating in their effect, that all human activity is reduced to a virtual standstill. Stand still, my foot. Why, they work like the very me. <laughs>
Bye. 
Through history, Navy men have worn a variety of colorful uniforms. But today, the sailor's uniform, like his ship, has been scientifically streamlined. The blouse, a uh, jumper, is tailored of 18-ounce bat-dyed navy blue melting cloth. The cuffs and collar are of the same material. Uh, <clears throat> the cuffs and collar are... Oh, uh, well, perhaps we better go aboard ship and have a look around. Well, here's Seaman Tarfu. He'll help us with our little, uh, demonstration. Oh, yes, the jumper. The Navy man carries very little on his person. Therefore, the jumper has only the one small pocket, which, however, is adequate for all his personal effects. Hmm. The less said about a sailor's pants, the better. The jumper, although snug-fitting, was designed to be easily removed. Grasping the lower seam between the thumb and forefinger of each hand and exerting a gentle upward pull before our sailor boy can say, heave ho the mizzen mast. Uh, heave ho the mizzen mast. Heave ho the mizzen mast. There, it's off in a jiffy. Man your battle stations. Man your battle stations. Navy craft are always kept immaculately clean. <laughs> and whatever natural hazards may be encountered are always handled with true Navy efficiency. Of all Navy traditions and ceremonies, the most colorful is that of piping the Admiral aboard. Another Navy tradition is that of growing a beard on long cruises. But it must conform to regulations. Hmm. The regulation clearly states the hair, beard, and mustache must be worn neatly trimmed. The hair, beard, and mustache must be worn neatly trimmed. <laughs> and what is a sailor without a tattoo? Today's super dreadnought boasts a completely equipped meteor, uh, meteor, meteor, uh, weather forecasting laboratory. Hmm, wonder what the weather's gonna be tomorrow. Uh, 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 looks like a storm to me. Seriously, however, Navy equipment is the finest obtainable. And though a sailor must still take his turn at standing watch in the crow's nest, he has at hand the most powerful binoculars in the world enabling him to see through solid banks of fog, mist, and rain, even beyond the horizon. Fresh.
Association, of course, no picture about our Navy would be complete without some appraisal of the American sailor as a fighting man. Let's hear from a recognized authority on this subject. What'd you expect, sailor? The army made this picture. time you spent brushing your teeth. Planes of the Air Transport Command were busy flying a distance of 5,000 miles. Right now, in the time you spend looking at this issue of the Screen Magazine, your air transport planes are flying a distance equal to twice around the world. And between this minute and this same time tomorrow, they will have carried their cargoes 120 more times around the world. This was our Navy when we entered the war. 1,076 ships, combat and non-combat. Many of these ships have since been sunk. The Pacific, the Atlantic, the Mediterranean. Question, how many ships do we have today? Answer. 14 times as many as we had when we started, thanks to the men and women working in United States shipyards. Here's one for the books about your ally, China. The pay of a private in the Chinese army is the equivalent of 52 cents a month. He has been fighting the Japanese for six and one half years. In these six and one half years, the Chinese soldier has earned $40.56 and the respect of the entire civilized world. In all U.S. Army posts, one of the most serious problems is fire. Of all the fires that cause damage in U.S. Army posts, 17% are started by, guess what? Soldiers smoking in bed. Hmm, a very interesting figure. of you, the average American soldier. Nothing unusual, but there are some things you may not know about yourself that are pretty amazing. For example, you are five inches taller and 20 pounds heavier than any knight of King Arthur's round table. You know more about maps and compasses than Christopher Columbus. You are a more accurate shot with your rifle than Daniel Boone himself. And with your automatic weapons, you have greater firepower than a whole platoon of Napoleon's finest. And in addition to all this, you know more about making beds than the average American housewife. All in all, you're quite a guy. In fact, you're quite a lot of guys. How far does a bullet travel before it hits a chap? 150 yards? Uh-uh. A little bit further. 
the bullet starts to travel here, back home in the mines and the mills, when the parts of the unmade bullet begin their journey to the factory. Total distance to the factory, 11,700 miles. Finished bullet shoves off for California. 3,000 miles more. Across the Pacific to Australia. Add another 6,700 miles. Then, 2,100 miles by air, by truck, by mule, and up to the front on the back of a man. And this is where we came in. Range, 150 yards, plus 23,500 miles. Casualties, not caused by bullets, caused by sickness, avoidable sickness. In the United States Army, one of the great causes of sickness is diarrhea and dysentery. One of the greatest causes of diarrhea and dysentery is the dirty mess kit. Chow! Come and get it! And a boy, fill a rep. I was saying. As I was saying, dirty mess kits. And you ain't kidding, brother. while I blow about the U.S. Navy. Take our newest battle wagon. The great Iowa class. Everything's tremendous. Even the anchor. Each hook weighs as much as a tank. How safe are they from air attack? Compared to any battleship of three years ago, these new babies throw up an umbrella more than 100 times the size. The Iowa whips up enough juice to furnish a city of 20,000 with all its power and light. And speaking of lighting up cities, these ships are built to do a little lighting job on the cities of Japan. One ship tosses shells at the rate of 1,200 tons per hour a payload equal to the bomb load of 300 flying forts. So, do you mind if I blow? Hell no, let's all blow. The most useful piece of equipment the American soldier carries isn't G.I. He brought it into the Army with him, and he carries it here, right under his bucket. This is the gadget that runs the show, steers all the jeeps, fires every shot. While the soldier's brain is winning the war, in its spare time, it's preparing for peace. Thousands of men are getting set now for good post-war jobs. Courses in more than 600 college, high school, and technical subjects are being sent out daily by the U.S. Armed Forces Institute to American soldiers all over the world. Courses in everything. Carpentry, bookkeeping, chemistry, plumbing, art mathematics, and engineering. Thanks to the Armed Forces Institute, the brain that the American soldier took into the Army 
will be of greater value to himself on the day he takes it home. G.I. Shoes. Two pair to every man. Multiply by the number of men in the services, and you've got a lot of leather. Put into one piece, it would cover 2,893 acres. This hunk of hide cost the nation 75 million bucks. Yet, every month, acres of this leather are burned up by soldiers who try to dry wet shoes by giving them the hot foot. <laughs> Listen, pal. You can't eat them. Why cook them? Received in action. For heroism in action. For gallantry in action beyond the call of duty. Decorations in every combat unit prove that men who've got what it takes are giving more than what it takes. But there's one group of men that does its big job unarmed. These are the men of the chaplain corps with one of the highest percentages of honors in the Army. In the 34th Division alone, with 15 chaplains, 11 have been decorated. One Distinguished Service Cross, four Purple Hearts, two Legion of Merits, and four Silver Stars. In this division, and in all divisions, the work of the chaplains brings honor to themselves. And this work carries the spirit of their faiths to every front. What the Axis enjoys counting are the American soldiers killed and injured by accidents. And there's plenty to count. This sort of thing. This is saving Hitler bullets. This sort of thing. This makes the American army smaller. Lifting heavy objects the wrong way is causing hernia. And every American hernia means one soldier lost for service. no fine wonder. American fighting men swim where they shouldn't. cease being fighting men. Sometimes American soldiers do rather strange things. <laughs> Just a little pillow fight. And then there's always the warrior who falls asleep in his chariot. These and hundreds of other types of avoidable accidents are mounting up the sound of the accident adding machine is music to the ears of the enemy. American bombers, a thousand plane raid. In a single operation of this size, the gasoline used up would keep your old family jalopy running, running, Running. Yep, still running, running, running day and night for 71 years. Ha, diggity, what a ride.
Axis countries, voting is a rather interesting process. In the German army, for example, All in favor of me, say ya! Ya! Mine. It is unanimous! In the Japanese army, it's even more interesting. One more vote for Tojo. But in a democracy, voting is a little different. People actually run for office, and people actually vote as they please, in peace and whenever possible in time of war. We felt this way in a war a long time ago, when an American general said these words. A very large portion of legal voters of the United States are now under arms in the field. They are American citizens, having still their homes and social ties binding them to the states from which they come and to which they will return. In performing their sacred duty to their country in its hour of trial, they should not be deprived of a most precious privilege. That's what we did then. And that's what we're doing now. This November, our country will hold a general election. Americans will vote for men to hold these offices. President, vice president, senators in certain states, and representatives in all states. However, before Americans overseas could vote, it was necessary to solve several problems. The first was distance. Americans were everywhere. To lick the problem of distance, we must fly the ballots. The second problem was eligibility. That meant, of the millions of men overseas, which ones met the voting requirements? Could this man vote? Could this man vote? This man? This man? Hey! How about me? Can I vote? To find that out, first of all, read the posters. What posters? You won't be able to miss them. A series of five posters appearing at intervals will be tacked up everywhere in and around your installation. It's up to you to read these posters. They will tell you how to find out whether you're eligible to vote. They'll also tell you exactly what you must do to vote. Now, not only these posters to help you, a voting officer has been appointed in your outfit, and he's been ordered to make himself known to you. The voting laws of every state are different, but practically all states have one thing in common. Practically all of them have made it possible for men overseas to vote by state absentee ballot. If you want to vote, your voting officer will give you a card. Fill it out, front and back. Get it sworn to. And then airmail it, postage free, to your home state capital. If you're eligible to vote, your state will airmail back your absentee ballot or further instructions. If, however, you apply before September 1st, and you don't receive your state absentee ballot by October 1st, you may ask for one of these. If your state is one that approves its use, you can vote with this. Write or print carefully. If you mess up your ballot, your vote will not be counted. So be neat. And don't forget, take your oath. Your government is doing everything in its power to enable you to vote. Posters, your voting officer, applications for state absentee ballots, and official federal war ballots. If everything is not completely clear, stop in, and your voting officer will explain your situation to you personally. But remember, if you don't want to vote, you don't have to. Also remember this, no one can boss your vote. No one will be marched to vote. And your ballot is a secret. This is an American election. And if you follow the instructions carefully, your ballot will fly home and will make you a part of another American election. And that's important.
When this guy was stationed in the United States, his pay didn't look like very much. But over here, it looks a lot bigger, especially to the people who live here and buy in this little store. Then you come along. You make a purchase. Your friends get the same idea. The stockpile gets smaller. The price gets bigger. About all there's left for the townspeople is the great big price. Multiply this scene a few thousand times and you get an idea of what happens. Money. Money without buying power. Money shot to hell. If you throw less of that money around and salt some of that money away, it will not only help the people who live here, but it'll help you later on. by a fearless breed of men. Men afraid of absolutely nothing. That's right. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing? Ever since the world began, men have been scared. The brave knights of old had those same cold beads of perspiration. Their hair stood on end. Their hands got clammy. Their hearts pounded. Their stomachs flopped and bounced. Frightened them and they got keyed up too, being normal human beings. Scare a man and automatically his fear machinery starts rolling wakes him up all over and prepares him to recognize the danger. Nerves go into action and wake up a couple of glands. The glands come through with a shot of adrenaline and all hell breaks loose. But it all makes sense. Nerve cells get hopped up. You see more clearly you hear more keenly. Muscles tense. Your body's ready to act and act fast. But to act at top speed calls for extra energy. That's where the liver comes in. This is the fuel tank. The fuel is sugar. And here's where it's stored. Getting scared gets it out. Out through the bloodstream to your muscles that need it. To get it there quicker, your heart pumps faster, and you breathe harder, bringing in more oxygen to change that sugar into strength. And here we are. Scared? Yes, but ready. Ready either to get away from the danger or stay and fight with extra strength. That's the best thing about fear. 
you can make it work for you instead of against you. The GI Bill of Rights. Just who gets the benefits of this bill? Any veteran, male or female, with more than three months active service, who hasn't been dishonorably discharged. Will it help me in finding a job? No, the bill itself does not. But you do get help elsewhere. It's your draft board that helps you to get your old job back. Or the United States Employment Service will help you find a new one. But suppose they don't find me a job right away. If they can't find you a job right away, you'll be given $20 a week up to a limit of 52 weeks. Moreover, if your job brings in less than $23 a week, you get a government check to make up the difference between your income and $23. What's the dope on borrowing money? Don't get the wrong idea about that loan provision. The government doesn't guarantee that you will get a loan. It just makes it a little easier for you to borrow money for a business, equipment, a farm, a home. Yeah, now suppose I want to borrow enough to build myself a house. Making arrangements for this loan will still be your job. As with any loan, before you can borrow, you have to show you have credit. By credit, we mean property you own, or the money you're earning, or the skill and experience behind you. Normally, you would have to back all of this loan yourself. But when you're a veteran, the government will back 50% of your loan, up to a limit of $2,000. In addition, the government pays the interest for one year on this part of the loan. Does the GI Bill of Rights give us any free education? Every veteran, young or old, can study in any approved school for one year. Grammar school or high school, college, trade school, business school. You name it, and if you can meet the requirements, you can have it. The government pays all of your school bills up to $500 a year, and living expenses of $50 a month, or $75 a month if you have dependents. Moreover, if you were under 25 when you went into the service, or if 25 are over, and can show that the war interrupted your education, when you come back, you can have that one year that every veteran gets, plus the same length of time you spent in active service. That is up to a total of four years of schooling. Those are the main points of your GI Bill of Rights. Help if you're unemployed. Help in borrowing money. Free education. It's not a bonus. It's not a handout. But it is a way to help you get started again in your permanent career as a United States citizen.